Now I'm going to show you the proper way to load an anesthetic cartridge and how to disassemble and use the scoop and cap method for needle safety. There are a variety of different techniques and devices that you can use for needle safety, but ultimately if you don't use the technique or device, you're still at risk of injury. Needle sticks are 100% preventable. The only reason that happen is if somebody's being careless. Not you personally, somebody else could have been careless and left a sharp needle that you didn't see. Now we have an injury. So needles, needle sticks are definitely 100% preventable. And as long as we follow the same safety precautions, everybody should be able to avoid one. Knock on wood, I've been practicing for, you know, 10 years now and I have never had a needle stick. Why is that? Because I follow protocol correctly. We can have cards, we can have needle cap holders, but ultimately if you don't follow the protocol, you're still gonna be at risk of injury. So I want everybody to learn the scoop and cap technique because that way everybody can do that with every single needle and you don't need to worry about if you don't have a card, if you don't have a needle cap holder, you'll still know the proper way to cap a needle if you don't have any of those accessories nearby, okay? So let's go ahead and start with how do we load one of these cartridges first, okay? So here we have an aspirating syringe. It's a cook weight design, this one's from Benko. And we have two different types of needles that we use in our office, a blue short needle and a yellow long needle. They both work exactly the same when it comes to assembling a cartridge, okay? So here we have our instruments. We have our cartridge. And what we'll do is we're gonna uncap our needle. This has a blue cap for the needle end, and then this is for the portion that goes into the syringe. So you can see if I pop that off, this part goes into the syringe, okay? So all we have to do is insert that needle into the tip of the syringe, and then twist it on. I'll demonstrate that again with this one. Uncap, set that down. Now look how far away my hand is from this. It's gonna be very hard for me to accidentally poke myself. Even if I miss here, it's pretty far distance. So I'm not holding this all the way over here. That's dangerous. I'm holding this pretty far away so I don't hurt myself. And that's essentially it. That's how you put a needle onto a syringe. Now you can see where I inserted our needle That needle actually pierces, it comes right through that hole. And as we insert a cartridge, we want to make sure we don't bend that, okay? A cartridge can't just fit in here. It's designed not to fit like that. You actually have to pull that plunger back. And you can see that plunger moving as I pull it back. The proper way to insert a needle in a cartridge is to take the gold end of it with the rubber membrane there on the metal end of it, that goes in first. It goes in first so it doesn't bend that needle point that's inside there. I'll drop that one. So we'll slide it in this way and you'll see here as I slide it into position I'll make sure that that needle goes into the cartridge like that. So now that little piece of needle that was sticking through here is inside that cartridge. The whole cartridge hasn't inserted yet, but I got the needle into the tip of that cartridge. Now as I pull that plunger back, that cartridge falls right into place and it's ready to go. What we'll then want to do is make sure we give this, we'll make sure we give this a good squeeze to get our harpoon. And if we saw that there's a harpoon right there, you can see that sharp point right there. That pierces that little triangle right there, if we can see it. That right there. That pierces the back of our cartridge. That pierces this rubber end right into there. So what I want to do is, and I think you can see it, see it entering right there, give it a good squeeze so it engages. Now, since it's engaged, now since this is engaged, as I move that harpoon in and out, it's moving the plunger with it because it's locked into it. And there we have an assembled cartridge. 
we uncap it, we can see it's now functioning fine. So you want to give it a little bit of a squeeze to make sure that anesthetic actually comes out of there. Now, let's talk about recapping a needle. So now, let's talk about recapping a needle. We're going to use what's called the scoop and cap method technique, okay? So let me show you what never to do. Never, ever, ever, do not ever do this. Never take your needle cap and your needle and try to um, cap it this way. Don't do that. You will stab yourself. You might not stab yourself every time, but eventually you're going to do it, and then it's a big ordeal, and we don't want you to get sick, and we don't want to risk the patient sick. So please just follow protocols. Never, ever, ever don't do that okay don't do that here's how you cap it what we want to do is we want to scoop the cap of that needle onto here and then we'll use our hands to tighten it so here we have an exposed needle and we have our cap and i'm going to go ahead and adjust my camera first so let me demonstrate the proper way to do the scoop and cap technique we'll take our needle and we have our cap here and look I am not, I'm not going to hold this in place. I'm just going to leave this alone and I'm going to bring the needle and that needle is going to insert into that cap and then it's going to lift up on its own like that. So you can see that. So it's actually a one hand technique. I'm going to keep this hand out of the way and I'm going to scoop into position and then I finish the capping. That is the scoop and cap technique. It's called scoop and cap because you scoop it up and then you finish capping it, okay? So we'll demonstrate with a blue needle as well, okay? Let's see if we can zoom this out a little bit so we can see the smoother technique. Let me show you what's gonna happen though. As we try to scoop this, it's gonna move that cap. So that's why you don't wanna leave it on the counter like this. You wanna keep it somewhere where that cap will have something to bump against. So we'll go ahead and take our needle and we will insert into there and lift it up. And now it's capped. Look at what I'm not doing here. If this is moving around, I'm not stabilizing and doing this. That is bad. I will not do two-handed. Absolutely not, okay? Now, what I want you to see is this. If this cap is moving, I will not hold it with my own hand. If it's moving, you actually need stability, go ahead and grab some cotton pliers if you absolutely have to, okay? And then you can cap it like that as well, okay? So if you're having difficulty, grab some cotton pliers, hold it the cotton pliers, and then you can cap it. Just like that. But never, ever, ever stabilize with your hand. That is wrong, okay? Never, ever, ever stabilize with your hand. That is wrong, okay? So you will scoop, get stability at the end of the tray if you have to, and now, now this is safe to finish capping like that, okay? Now, when we disassemble the syringe, remember how we talked about that harpoon engaging? We have to twist that harpoon out of that plunger, pull all the way back, and pop that cartridge out of there, and pull the cartridge out. That's all you have to do. We'll twist that harpoon, separate it, and we'll pull that cartridge out. Now we have to unscrew our syringe top. We'll go ahead and unscrew it. Now be careful. If you are unscrewing and you accidentally uncap it, drop the cap and use your scoop and cap technique cap it again. 
as you're unscrewing, put pressure, put pressure this way inwards. Put pressure inwards as you're unscrewing to make sure that cap comes off with the needle. Now pay attention. You have another exposed needle. That side is just as dangerous as this side. This end is just as sharp as this end. This side's capped, this side's not. We need to put our safety cap back on. We're not going to do this with our bare hands. We again will use a scooping technique to cap it. You can scoop that many times with that one. It'll just stay in place and you can finish capping it that way, okay? So remember, even with the short end of the needle, you still never ever cap a single. You can do a scoop that way. It will scoop just the same. Again, let me demonstrate it again. Into there and lift. Scoop and cap. Alternatively, if you can, you can go ahead and flip it upside down and cap it. But again, just find out what works best for you. I prefer to scoop it upwards. But again, look at this. It's moving around the t tray. I'm not using my other hand, but I did finally get it. And now it's safe to finish capping. So remember, with needles, never, ever, ever use two hands to connect those needles. That is going to be a recipe for disaster. So even on the short end, you must cap it with just one hand, okay? So you must use a one-handed capping technique. Never, ever, ever try to cap with two hands like that. Always go with a single one. Always scoop, okay? Always scoop. Hopefully that explains how to cap a needle. Remember, you must do this every single time, no exceptions. There is never, ever, ever an appropriate time to use two hands to cap a needle, unless you have a safety device in between, like a safety card. I would recommend you just make it a habit to always use a single scoop and cap technique, no matter what, because even if you have a safety card, some days you're going to run out of safety cards, then what are you going to do? You got to know how to cap a needle without a safety card. You got to know how to cap a needle without any other devices other than just a needle, because if you know how to do that, you will always, always, always have the skill to safely cap a needle and avoid injury. Thank you.